Today's episode is a deep dive examples into the balance between the free markets and market. Interest. I really hope that you enjoy these episodes. Before we get into this one, I want to first tell you about our sponsors. First up is LMAX Digital, the number one institutional crypto exchange. They offer clients the deepest pool of crypto liquidity on the planet, underscored by a 100% uptime track record through volatility spikes. They leverage LMAX Group's liquidity relationships and ultra-low latency technology. LMAX Digital is the market-leading solution for institutional crypto trading and custodial services. If you've never heard of LMAX Digital, it's probably because you are not an institution. They have no retail, only institutions. They feature a central limit order book streaming spot Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash, all paired with US dollars, Euro, and Yen. LMAX Digital. They're secure, they're liquid, and they're trusted. Learn more at lmaxdigital.com slash pomp. Again, lmaxdigital.com slash pomp. This episode is brought to you by 8sleep. 8sleep is the single best product that I have purchased over the last three years. It completely changed my life. I'm not joking. Pay attention. The Pod Pro cover, which goes over your mattress by 8sleep, is the most advanced solution on the market for thermal regulation. It pairs dynamic cooling and heating with biometric tracking. You can go to 8sleep.com slash pomp to check out the Pod Pro cover and you save $150 at checkout. They currently ship within the United States, Canada, and the UK. Now, I told you, it changed my life. It helps me sleep deeper, helps me sleep longer. I feel much more refreshed and I have better energy. You want to know how I have relentless energy every single day? Because I sleep on an 8 sleep. Seriously, go check it out. 8sleep.com slash pomp today. This episode is brought to you by OKX. OKEX has dropped the E to become OKX. Founded in 2017 with a mission to deliver a cutting edge crypto trading experience, OKX, the world's second largest crypto exchange by trading volume, has since expanded its scope alongside the wider industry, adding features from all corners of crypto. If EX is about exchange, X is about intersections. Cross-chain, cross-functional, cross-platform, an interoperable future that's not siloed into isolated platforms and blockchains. The name change and the new look and feel represent OKX's ongoing move towards decentralized finance. With OKX's decentralized platform and Web3 wallet, MetaX, you have full custody over your crypto. Connect MetaX in your browser or within the OKX app to explore DeFi, NFTs, and play to earning gaming, the world's most powerful crypto exchange. Whether you're just learning about crypto, you're a seasoned DeFi degen, an NFT enthusiast, or a pro trader, you're all invited to a better future. Go check it out today and let me know what you think. All right, let's get in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Anthony Pompliano runs Pomp Investments. All views of him and the guests on his podcast are solely their opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Pomp Investments. You should not treat any opinion expressed by Pomp or his guests as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a particular strategy, but only as an expression of his personal opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Good morning, everyone. Bang, bang. There are various schools of thoughts in business, finance, and politics. Some people believe in free markets as a self-correcting mechanism, while others believe that market intervention is a better pursuit. Each of these ideas can be taken to the extreme. Free market believers become anarchists, and market interventionists become communists. Extremism in either direction has historically led to magnified problems in a society. So we'll refrain from including those in this analysis. If we simply evaluate market intervention versus free markets, I believe we are beginning to see a recurring theme in the digital economy. First, the federal minimum wage in the United States is $7.25, and it hasn't changed since July of 2009. Each state has their own minimum wage requirements as well, which range from no minimum wage in states like Mississippi, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Louisiana, to $5.15 in a state like Georgia, to $15 an hour in California and New York. Barring California and New York, which only require $15 an hour for a small selection of businesses in their state, there are no states that have successfully achieved the $15 per hour minimum wage that is constantly floated by politicians on the campaign trail. This is noteworthy because numerous studies highlight that approximately 80% of American workers are now paid at least $15 an hour. Andrew Van Dam and Heather Long from the Washington Post explained last August, quote, the U.S. labor market hit a new milestone recently. For the first time, average pay in restaurants and supermarkets climbed above $15 an hour. Wages have been rising rapidly as the economy reopens and businesses struggle to hire enough workers. Some of the biggest gains have gone to workers in some of the lowest paying industries. Overall, nearly 80% of U.S. workers now earn at least $15 an hour, 
up from 60% in 2014. Job sites and recruiting firms say many job seekers won't even consider jobs that pay less than $15 anymore. For years, low-paid workers fought to make at least that much. Now it has effectively become the new baseline, end quote. So the politicians and regulators who are acting as market interventionists have been unsuccessful in achie achieving a $15 minimum wage at the federal or state level. At the same time, the free market has already driven the effective minimum wage for workers past that milestone. This is a classic example of the free market driving results while the market interventionists are bogged down in bureaucracy and politics. Another example of this comparison is in the accredited investor rules within the United States. Currently, only investors that meet specific wealth and income milestones are eligible to invest in private market opportunities. These opportunities traditionally fall in the private equity or venture capital bucket, but can include real estate or debt offerings in certain instances as well. Many people in positions of power and influence have discussed evolving these rules to allow more individuals to participate in these investment opportunities. Ideas have ranged from a knowledge-based test to lower wealth and income level requirements. While the regulatory and political apparatus continues to discuss potential solutions, the free market has found a unique solution. Bitcoin was launched as a decentralized asset that was rooted in open source software. There was no need to adhere to securities law because there was no team or individual that personally benefited from the creation, launch, and scaling of the asset. While the asset failed to meet the securities framework, it provided the single best investment return over the last decade. These venture capital style returns meant that anyone in the world with an internet connection, regardless of wealth or income, finally had the opportunity to capture private market returns. The free market figured out how to democratize access to investment opportunities without the need to wait for the market interventionist to create the solution. It would be difficult for every asset in the private market to become a decentralized open source software solution. So there are still challenges in the market, especially when you evaluate this solution for its ability to be replicated. With that said, the free market was still able to create a solution that addressed one of the hardest problems to solve in financial markets. These two solutions show that the free market has the potential to create solutions before the market interventionist. It isn't a guarantee, and there are still questions about which approach can create the solution faster, but it is hard to ignore the efficacy of free markets in the digital economy. When you overlay the complexity across jurisdictions and geographies, the free market may actually be a better governor of the various aspects in this new world. Humans always want to feel like they're doing something. They are solving problems. They are addressing bad situations. They are constantly in control. But the truth is that sometimes the free market outperforms humans, which is worth celebrating. I hope each of you has a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.